Uh, my name is Fang Xu. I have been a lecturer in the interdisciplinary studies field major uh, at Berkeley since 2016. And I graduated from CUNY Graduate Center in New York um, in, in the sociology department. That's where I got my PhD. Um, I was trained as an urban sociologist, but mostly my work is about language identity uh, in the context of Shanghai, China. So, um, in a way, I have been doing interdisciplinary research my whole PhD life and then the last almost six years coming to Berkeley. And uh, um, my other research interest about um, immigration in China and consumer society, also uh, in relation to language and identity, um, the issues about nationalism. Um, I was born and raised in Shanghai, so um, the topic, the subject matter of my research uh, was the endangerment about the Shanghai dialect. So that was a language I spoken since I was little, and it was a lingua franca of the city, but I've experienced and I've observed since the early 2000s, the language or the dialects as the Chinese states categorize it, has been declining, has been dying, and then you could no longer hear on the streets in Shanghai. So that uh, became a puzzle for me. And trained as a social scientist, I was like, I, I really want to figure out why. Um, how, how come suddenly, you know, the whole, the whole city and multiple generations, they stop speaking the dialect. So that triggered the whole research project. And uh, I went to Shanghai in 2013 and 17, uh, engaged with field research, interviews and surveys, observations. And then all those data came together uh, into um, this book here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was out um, July 2021. So it was less than half a year ago. And I incorporate those materials in my teaching at ISF as well. Um, I started teaching when I was a PhD student in New York, and I taught three years at Lehman College in the Bronx. So that was my first experience engaging with students. I mean, uh, a very diverse student body. Um, most of my students there were um, Latinx and uh, African Americans, and myself being. Uh, Chinese American, so uh, that opens my eyes to how to engage students coming from different walks of life. And then since 2016, I came to Berkeley. Um, I would say um, the proportion of Asian or Asian descent students here are much higher than New York, New York City. And so that gives you opportunity to introduce lots of contents. I think it will interest the students touching on ethnic diversity or Asian American experience. And then um, given the topics I teach, consumer society, immigration, um, and urban sociology, and uh, uh, language and identity, I try to integrate or, um, how to say, encourage students to bring in their personal lived experience into um, their assignments, into class discussions. And then within the ISF major itself, we have this ISF 189 Research Methods course. I've been teaching since I joined, like more than five years ago. Um, so it, and also supervise students in your thesis. So I would say it's a combination of hands-on and hands-off. In terms of hands-on is that I really try to teach students how to do research. Uh, collect empirical data. How do you interact with strangers and then um, build rapport with strangers to conduct in-depth interviews or uh, distribute surveys to a wide um, audience of potential research participants and then how do you actually um, learn, so to speak, the language of social science research. So that's kind of a hand-holding process. And then what I meant by hands-off is to have the freedom and the liberty to explore any topics they are interested in. Um, in previous years, I had students um, studied African refugees, uh, no, sorry, African, Afghanistan refugees, and uh, um, um, say um, language endangerment or revitalization in Maori New Zealand, or how I, Filipino Americans engaged with space in the um, healthcare settings 
and then or how uh, Instagram users are so uh, fascinated by say shots of a scenic spot so everyone would go there went to the exact same spot take the exact same shots and then she went there to interview all these people uh, at uh, tourist locations across the Bay Area saying that why did you do that? Why isn't the Instagram or any social media is a place to showcase your unique identity? I was trained a sociologist but I I don't do kind of strictly defined sociology because my work lean towards kind of urban planning, urban studies, and then um, social linguistics, and then it's um, uh, incorporate environmental psychology and human geography, um, a bit social psychology as well, and then social linguistics into my own work. And that's how my orientation is to see or engage with the social world from this interdisciplinary approach. And I would say intellectually I benefit from that and I try to communicate this kind of approach to my students. And ISF is a perfect platform for it and perfect venue. Um, I think ISF is a great choice of major for undergrad at uh, UC Berkeley because um, you know the new generation they have all these new ideas and then they try to um, achieve something beyond office work after graduate and then all these new phenomena we are always learning as faculty and then they bring all these uh, uh, new puzzles. Um, questions they have about the society it could be climate change, about the sense of community, about where this tech industry is going, and what the sense of belonging among immigrants, and uh, um, so all these things I would say it would be very hard to tackle from a single, in uh, single discipline. And then because the structure of the ISM major, we allow students to take courses uh, across multiple disciplines on campus. And then we guide students to put together this what we call course of study. Um, it means students will take upper division courses in multiple disciplines uh, uh, on campus. And then the subject matter of those courses would need to uh, inform their own research projects. And then this sets a very good uh, foundation, uh, intellectual academic scholarship foundation for them to engage with empirical research. And that's um, and all of them uh, need to write a 30 to 40 pages senior thesis as the capstone project um, to fulfill their major requirements. And then over the years, I have all these students coming back to me say, well. Yes, I only taught here for five years, but I would say there are lots of great students, even within that five years I've been teaching at ISF. Um, they land jobs at various places, all very much relevant um, to their, uh, with their ISF thesis. For example, a few years ago, I had a student, he came to ISF, um, he's interested in gentrification in urban issues. And then because of the resources on campus, ISF allows students to incorporate into their experience. So he went to Berlin uh, for study abroad half a year. I connect him with some of my uh, faculty friends at the universities there. And he did a comparative study about measures landlords and homeowners took to renovate their houses to, to meet the kind of environmentally sustainable uh, codes. And then he ended up working as an intern at the junior level job right after graduating from Berkeley uh, at the Capitol Hill in DC. And he got into very much involvement with some social activism in involving housing rights and then looking to hubs policies. Or another student I had, um, she was a transfer student. Um, she's a bit older and she is of half uh, partial Maui descent. And then she cares a lot about this uh, minority or uh, native identity, how it associated with language. And then um, I work with her closely. She got some research grant for the Center for Gender Studies, Gender Race Studies here. And then she went back to Maui to, uh, to do interviews. And then looking to the language revitalization projects um, after graduation. She started uh, actually a nonprofit organization 
uh, and with some friends, of course, and some funding opportunities. And um, they're really looking to the um, the Native Americans' rights. And then later on, she now is an analyst working for a nonprofit organization uh, about low-income uh, residents in the Bay Area's benefit and helping them to to to. Um, hope through all these obstacles to access aid, to access help, and uh, or yeah, so like there are lots of cases of students, um, they feel very committed um, to a social issue, and then that goes beyond their journey at Cal and really prompt them um, to start a career uh, after graduation. And of course, every year I have students enter grad schools and law schools. Um, I think last year, um, a student, he is uh, Chinese descent. Uh, she, he, before migrated to, to the US, uh, he lived in this island, Hainan Island, uh, at the southern tip of China. And then he was very interested in the one-child policy in China. And we worked together to develop a research project. Uh, he went back. Um, Oh, of course, before COVID, uh, did interviews, did surveys, and wrote an honor thesis, and now he is at Columbia Law about human rights. Yeah. What makes ISF students successful is also what makes IF, ISF an attractive major. Um, because it's not a coursework based major and, and oftentimes we attract students really have some thoughts uh, about what they want to do uh, um, with their uh, education at Berkeley and then they try to find a good fit and also the kind of the space they can uh, explore and form their own thoughts and research projects and then actually embark on a journey before graduation about, about, about um, engaging with a society. And uh, so I would say motivation, curiosity, uh, strong motivation, and dedication. Um, one more thing I would say, especially I've observed uh, in terms of um, students' achievement and progress within ISF under COVID is resilience. It's not easy. You can say that, well, st students study really hard to pass exams and quizzes and get a final paper in, but doing empirical research, every researcher knows it's not easy. And then we have done that for years, but these are undergrad students. They have never encountered um, all these challenges, things they have never learned to do, and then now suddenly they are asked to do it very first time, going beyond campus into communities they are not necessarily a member of. So there will be lots of um, difficulties or pushbacks. They try to schedule interviews with some community members or community leaders got pushed back, got canceled. And then especially under COVID, they have all these plans to do research. And then suddenly people say, no, I'm not, I can't do it with you. And then I'm not meeting in person or I'm, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't think I can help you to, to finish your thesis project. And so there is this quality of resilience. Uh, I think is very important, not only um, for undergrad study, but also after graduation, when they enter the professional world or when they go to graduate schools, how um, you can figure out a way to adjust your plan and then um, carry on, basically, yeah. Common misunderstanding or misconception of what ISF was, I think lots of students still coming from this course-based major idea. And then they would ask us faculty like, oh, is that good? Is this list good? Um, can I just get these done and graduate? And we also always ask them that, is that what you want to do? What is the topic, research topic you want to do? That is the base of your ISF major. Tell me more what you are interested in. Then we can build from there. So, yeah. Students who have heard about ISF major but not so sure whether that would be a, a, a good idea for them, I would just say, you know, uh, there's some work they need to do as a student themselves. Look at our website, look at some potential websites 
uh, websites of potential other majors and then talk to our students academic advisor Patrick and talk to faculty and then one thing I would say that selection process is almost like grad school you look into ISF faculty's research look into what past ISF students work we have all those information on our websites and then come to uh, talk to faculty to see how much we can uh, brainstorm some ideas uh, for your thesis research and then again it goes back to what I just said about the quality of successful ISF students or student would feel uh, ISF is the ideal major for them is that they would need to bring us ideas. If you just want to finish some courses and then get a high GPA and graduate with a Berkeley diploma, as it might not be a good place for you. And, but if you want to do something, think about your professional life, career life in the long term, some topic or issues you want to devote your life to, really come to talk to us. This is the book I published in um, July 2021, titled Silencing Shanghai, uh, Language and Identity in Urban China, based on research I've been doing um, in Shanghai since 2013, and then um, it wrapped up at the end of 2020. Um, so now I'm thinking the next stage, next steps, will be research project more based in the um, SF Bay area. So there are two projects I've been thinking about and have some groundwork laid out. One is um, actually based on the course I've been teaching in the ISF major. It's, uh, uh, it's called Language and Identity. And then within that course, I have this assignment called uh, uh, interview, uh, not pause, sorry, so it's, uh, I make students do interviews with first generation immigrants in, in terms of their uh, experience with language based discrimination and then their sense of belonging and also their opinion on the saying the Americans speak English. So students are instructed to uh, recruit uh, one first generation immigrant who doesn't have English as their mother language or, or first language. Um, so over the four, four semesters I've taught that class, I have collected uh, through students uh, assignments more than 200 interview reports. And most of the students, there are two groups. One group, uh, they interview their parents. And you're like, if, of course, California, lots of our students uh, they might not be necessarily first gen, but they're from immigrant families. And then it's so close, it's just their parents are first generation immigrants. And then another uh, group of the interview reports are uh, they interview their classmates. So basically international students uh, of Berkeley um, or in the Bay Area. So it really shows kind of the immigrants experience in terms of in this uh, perceived to be liberal, progressive California, or even in the Bay Area, how first-generation immigrants who speak English with a strong accent, or just with a hint of accent, has experienced um, social exclusions and uh, rejections, or even um, just that uh, discrimination. So I'm planning to write a piece about this. And then another project is in the earlier phase is about, again, sense of belonging um, under COVID because I live in San Francisco. Lots of people left, moved out, but there are most, uh, most people stay. So in a sense, I try to explore that expand uh, my training in urban sociology about this so-called place attachment, how individuals attach to a physical location and build these connections not only with people there, but also with, say, the built environments, the neighborhood streets, and then stores, or even the ambience of the neighborhood. And then I try to expand that um, research with that concept, expanding from Shanghai to San Francisco, and to interview people who belong to different age groups about why they stayed, if it makes more financial sense to leave. And so, in a way, I'm trying to say that really economic incentives are not really that fundamental in terms of sense of place, sense of belonging. So these are the two new projects I need to find time for. Okay.